Oh yeah, no. Oh yeah, no, what did I tell you? It's even got a row named after it. Head on up the track and see again what we can find. This road goes back up to the road that joins the Craig Navarre. Oh, the other side goes down into Laxey. And that goes past a few plantations we're going to have to have a look at sometime too. You're used to people, aren't you, man? <laughs> I've got nothing for you. Well, that track, as I said, winds right up to the top of the Craigna Bar. There's a place up there called Honey Hill Farm. That's going to be one of our destinations today, hopefully, too. And I just parked the car in a spot of this little gateway in the undergrowth. And I reckon this must be the entrance to Inamona. I guess this must be the gateway to the house. I'll follow the path in anyway. I suspect, like the others, they'll have been raised to the ground too. Now I know a little bit about the history of this place, but not as much as the forefathers did. It was farmed by the Moore family from Bagode. And uh, when this place was flattened, or blown up as they say, and Mr Moore Senior took it upon himself to actually take the stones from the barns and the houses from here and transport them with a pony and cart to the Bagode farm, which is just a bit lower down than here. And then he rebuilt a lovely little byre on the Bagode farm with the stones. Imagine doing that these days, eh? So it wouldn't happen, would it? When I said to you about the Enamona and the man up there who owned it or lived there, farmed there, this is the shed or the stable he built. And he carted the stone from there to here with a horse and cart. And according to Mr Moore, it's 1913, 1914. 107 years ago. It's still standing as good as the day it was built. And it was classed or used as a stable apparently. So an upstairs and a downstairs painted with red lead paint. In November 1913 when the Moore family came to be gold here, um, my grandfather was was 13 on the 31st of August and uh, on in November the on November the 12th he came here and he, he didn't go back to school uh, his first job was to move a mill round which was a soil horse walk for driving the mill um, that was here they moved that with a horse and cart and uh, and then they started my grandfather started with a uh, um, horse and upturned clod crusher as a sledge and he carted numerous multi multitude of, of loads uh, from inner Mona with when from where they came from um, to build this build the, to, to, to have to take the stone uh, to, to bring it here to uh, to build this four horse stable he didn't build it. He had they had stonemasons in building it, but uh, it was it was a new build at that time. And when were the la horses last in here? Can you remember? I think the last horse was here until the fifties. Um, the first tractor they had was an Alice Chalmer B <laughs> that came in nineteen thirty nine. 
and call it Suds and Cowleys. And the deal was that my grandfather had a cult at that time. He wanted the tractor because Liam was short. Um, so they, the deal was that Carlos and the Cowleys would be supplied with this broken cult. The cult had to be broken, put to work, and uh, and in return he would get the Alice Chalmer B tractor. So a bit, um, of, bit of bartering, don't worry. So really. my grandfather broke the cult and took it to Douglas, put it in the dray, came over for promenade delivering, and when my grandfather got to Broadway, he said, turned to the dry, to the other horseman and said, there, that'll do you now. And he hopped on the tram, come to the bottom of Summer Hill and then walked home. <laughs> So well, this is a, stand, a sandstone lintel. Sandstone lintel. Which came from Enamona. Which came from Enamona. Be an unusual thing to have up there, wouldn't it? Sandstone. Yes. We are at Enamona Farm in the parish of Oncombe. And uh, when I was young, down there by the van, there was sweeping walls in and two pillars. And that was the entrance to Enamona Farm. Here on the left hand side, was the front garden um, with mature trees in it and about 30 yards back down the road we see two, we would see two small stone pillars and that was the front gate into the garden. Well here we are at uh, this is Inamona house and this is where my grandfather was raised um, and it was a, an idyllic place Sitting here looking at the two reservoirs, Keradu and Clips. And just to prove that it was a house at one time, there's a bit of the old original wall. It looked like it had two or three rooms downstairs at least, facing south as John Willie says. So this would have been the buildings of Enamona. I'm walking along the back wall. It's an L shape. came up to here and then we would turn and go out along here and the road came up between the buildings and the farmhouse. My grandfather William Edward Moore was born on the 31st of August 1900. He was the third of five children, the middle of five children and this is where he was raised at Inamona. Um, he said he had a very good upbringing, although it was hard at the beginning. Uh, he said they were never short of food, they had veg off the farm, milk, lamb, but more than that, they always had plenty of trout out of the reservoir. They used to go down to the settlement pool at the top end of Clips Reservoir and uh, tickle trout, and that's what they lived on. Uh, the buildings here at Inamona in an L shape um, they were a fantastic set of buildings he said um, substantial and the back of them the back was level with the packet so the, the barn was actually level uh, and the turnip house was down a chute into the buildings below so they actually have the doors outside at the to level the ground level with the ground mm -hmm. yes Right. And um, roughly when did he leave here? He left here in November the 12th, 1913, because the farm was commandeered, purchased for, to uh, improve the water quality of the, of the reservoirs. And is that when they flattened the buildings and stuff? That's when, just around that time, just a few months after, he flattened those buildings. And did your grandfather own here or just rent it? He was only renting this. So, there is bits of things to say that was here. That's the uh, hedge with the garlic growing profusely. 
I suppose that would have been here those days. Not sure about the trees. Talk of 1932, don't forget, or 1930s. So there's no discernible buildings of any sort that I can find. We'll walk a bit further though. No, nothing to be found. A bit of a disappointment really. All oh, the trees, the flowers are just a delight to see. So that's the three little ruins we found which would have supported families for years. Goodbye Anemona.